Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Wednesday. Well, this episode, we're going to go from the very slow to the very fast. We'll look at a group of objects that you can see really any night over the next several months, as long as it's clear, but this will serve as a good introduction. And then we'll look at an object that might be visible on multiple nights, but you can only see it for a few minutes at a time. You have to know just when and where to look. Let's begin with the See It Anytime category. I mentioned last episode the celestial soap opera that's playing out in the evening sky at this time of the year. We're looking east-northeast tonight about two hours after sunset. We took a quick look last week at the well-known mythological constellation of Pegasus. It's easily recognized by the asterism called the Great Square. The square marks the body of the flying horse, Pegasus, who appears a bit upside down from our vantage point. Fun fact, only three of the four stars in the square are officially part of the constellation of Pegasus. The fourth, called Alpha Rats, is part of our next constellation, Andromeda the Princess. Now, it really depends how you look at it, though, since the name Alpha Rats is translated as the horse's navel. So somebody thought it was part of the horse, even if officially it isn't. Andromeda's stars form two graceful arcs, showing a princess, the daughter of Cassiopeia. Andromeda is chained to a rock by the sea because of her mother. Cassiopeia is in this part of the sky as well, a well-known W shape, or zigzag, in the sky. Cassiopeia is circumpolar from mid-northern latitudes. From places like Chicago, it never sets below the horizon. Cassiopeia was a rather vain individual, and in bragging about her beauty, she angered Poseidon, the god of the sea, who sent a sea monster, which we'll see later, to ravage the kingdom. Well, this wasn't good for the king, Cepheus, whose dimmer, circumpolar constellation is in the sky here, too. And he figured the best way to get rid of the sea monster was to sacrifice Andromeda to the sea monster. So that's how she finds herself chained to the aforementioned rock by the sea. Well, thankfully, Perseus the hero is around. He's fresh from having slain Medusa, the gorgon with snakes for hair. Her head is marked by the star Algol in the constellation of Perseus. Not only was she slain, but her death resulted in the birth of Pegasus, the flying horse, which was a pretty convenient way to get around for Perseus. So Perseus is flying around and sees Andromeda chained by the sea and swoops down to rescue her. But up from the water rises the sea monster Cetus, and he'll be rising in the sky tonight a little bit later on. And later in the fall, he'll be fully above the horizon at sunset. Well, you might recall the trick with Medusa was that if you looked at her, you'd turn to stone. Well, it turns out the same thing applied when she was dead. So Perseus showed the head of Medusa to Cetus, the sea monster, and the sea monster was turned to stone. So in summary, Perseus saves the day, Cetus is turned to stone, Andromeda is rescued, Medusa is killed, Pegasus is born, Cepheus didn't do much, and hopefully Cassiopeia brags a little bit less about her beauty. So definitely a soap opera of sorts being played out in the fall skies. And you might not see every star in these constellations where you live, but you should be able to trace out the lines of the story in the evening this week. Now most of the time in this show I talk about things that are visible over long periods, like planets and some of the constellations we just talked about. You can generally see these things in the sky for weeks or months at a time. I want to pick up the pace now and talk about something that is very bright, very easily seen from really any sky, but if you aren't looking in just the right place at just the right time, you'll miss it. I'm talking about the International Space Station. Believe it or not, you can see the International Space Station with just your eyes, even from light-polluted skies like Chicago. Depending on the viewing angle, the ISS can appear very bright, even brighter than a planet like Venus or Jupiter in the sky. This week, we have a few good passes of the space station here in Chicago. And if you aren't from Chicago, you can find out when and where it'll be visible from your location at the website we'll be using, heavens-above.com. And that's going to be linked in the description. Heavens Above also has a good app for Android users, and there are also plenty of other web and mobile options for finding the space station. So I'll be walking you through Sunday's Pass here in Chicago. On Heavens Above, make sure you enter your location, and then under the 10-day predictions for satellites, click on ISS. 
This brings up the visible passes over the next 10 days from your location. I usually scan the highest point altitude column for a pass that's higher than, say, 45 degrees, or about halfway up in the sky. These passes are longer and brighter and much more easily seen than the passes that are lower. So the one for October 3rd looks pretty good, so it's about two-thirds of the way up in the sky. Looking at this chart takes some getting used to, but a more intuitive way to go about it is to click anywhere on the row of the pass you're interested in, and you'll get a sky chart of that pass. This chart is a chart of the entire sky, so the center of the circle is overhead at the time of the pass. Now you can see cardinal points indicated around the edge. North is at the top. This line shows the path of the space station through the sky, and there's a handy arrow indicating the direction of travel. Now notice the time markings. So on Sunday in Chicago, the space station will rise in the west, northwest, at 737. It'll pass through the handle of the Big Dipper at 740, and then it continues to climb higher, brushing past Cepheus at its highest point. And as it enters the square of Pegasus, it'll be dimming rapidly as it goes into Earth's shadow, and it disappears at 743. Now, as with all charts that show the night sky, it might be helpful to rotate the chart so that the direction you're looking is at the bottom. So that's your horizon, and then as you look higher in the chart, you're looking higher in the sky. So here you might be able to visualize that. Looking in the west-northwest, the space station rises above our horizon and then starts to get higher and higher and eventually goes up towards the top of the sky. Now, as big as it is, the space station will only appear as a point of light to the naked eye. And keep in mind, it's still over 200 miles away when it's straight overhead. It's pretty amazing, though. We can see an orbiting laboratory with humans living on board with our naked eyes, even from very light polluted skies. So I hope you can get out there this weekend or the next time there's a clear night and a space station pass. Even for the one this Sunday, I would recommend checking the website closer to the time of the expected pass. These predictions can shift, sometimes by a couple of minutes, so you definitely don't want to miss it. Well, that's what we have for you today. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel, and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing, and we'll see you next time.